And of course, we started right from the beginning. And beginning, John jumps right into it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, so Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and He is life, you know. Uh, and and, and he, 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 is, he, he took on flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And that's Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. We watched His ministry begin, begin as John the Baptist announced it, as it was proclaimed in the, that he would 700 years before, seven, uh, by Isaiah, that, uh, that, that, that the, the proclaimer would come, and then uh, again in, uh, uh, in, the, in the very first book of the Bible, uh, we find again um, that, 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 that uh, um, John the Baptist was, was foretold that he would come and he would announce to all the people that, that the Messiah was here. And sure enough, when Jesus Christ uh, reached his maturity, uh, John the Baptist uh, began to preach. He had a six month long ministry, remember? But at the end of it, he said, he's the one, that's the one, that's the man. And, uh, and, and so we, uh, we, we saw how Jesus uh, fulfilled scripture perfectly how John fulfilled his ministry, his life's work, by pointing to Jesus Christ as the one. Then, we, uh, uh, we, today we, we, we saw, of course we saw him teach us all about evangelism, as he called his apostles, you know, Andrew and all of them. Now today, we saw Jesus do his first miracle at the, uh, as he turned the water into wine in the wedding at Cana. And so, he and his disciples came and he showed how he loved everybody and how it was right within sight of his hometown. Canaan was right within sight of Nazareth. So he started his ministry right there at home, just like all of us should. We'd be looking for someone to witness to, he's looking for someone to share with. Well, you look no further. It's right there in your own home, your own children, your, your neighbors, your, your, your cousins, you know, people you work with. Those are the people that you need to be witnessing to, starting right there, and telling them the truth. That Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. Uh, that he uh, uh, came into this world and became flesh. That's how much God loves us. He allowed him to become one of us. And then he paid that price on the cross for you and for me. And Jesus Christ, we see him go to a, right away, we see him going to a wedding right after he starts his ministry, right within sight of his home. And he does his first miracle, turning the water into wine. And he tells us, tells his mom, of course, his, his, mom that his, his, his time is not yet, meaning it's not time to be crucified. Okay? Now today we're going to look at, at uh, uh, the, uh, when, the first time he cleansed the temple. Did you know that he did that twice? Man, I remember, I remember people being highly offended when, when, when uh, Brother Otto, who goes to our church, uh, when he was pastor of another church, and he, he, he taught that, um, I think he came, he filled my pulpit one time, and he taught that, that, uh, that, that the first cleansing of the temple, and so people were really upset. What do you mean the first cleansing of the temple? Well, actually, I had to tell him, Autumn is only, was absolutely true. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus cleansed the temple. Now, uh, if, if, we, uh, if we go to, uh, to, our, to our, our word, uh, we see that at the Jews' Passover, verse 13, was that he and Jesus went up into Jerusalem. That's chapter 2, verse 13. And he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money, money uh, sitting. And so what he found when he went to the temple was that there was uh, a, great, a great deal of commerce taking place in the court of the Gentiles. They, they, were, they were changing money, and, you know, so you could buy, a, of course, a, a right... The, the right sacrifice, for the, uh, and it was all crooked, you know what I mean? Your sacrifice was never good enough, but you could buy one that the, 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 the high priest had, had arranged for you to buy, you go to the money, you had to buy, use their money to buy it. It was just a racket, making tremendous amounts of money. And, uh, and, and, and it was very unworshipful. And Jesus Christ was highly offended that. Now you have to understand, this is, this is what, uh, had been foretold that he would come into his temple and he would cleanse it. Now, I want to draw an analogy here, okay? This is the beginning of his ministry. 
What was the beginning of your ministry? And when did Jesus Christ cleanse your temple? I want you to think about that, okay? And that's where we're going to go with this. Because that's what he did. The first thing Jesus did as he begins his ministry, after he does his first miracle, calls his disciples together, uh, shows us how to win other people, he goes out and he goes to the temple and he doesn't like what he sees. Because the Bible says that the, that, the, that the temple was supposed to be a house of prayer. It was supposed to be a house of prayer. That's what God wants. He wants a, a place where, where people pray, people learn about God, where, where the word of God is, is, is taught and, uh, and, and, and young people learn who God is. It, it, was, it, was, uh, uh, it was a great blessing. It was supposed to be a great, great, great blessing. Uh, but it says that he, he found the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and, and, and the changes of money. And when he had made a, a, a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes of money and over to the tables. And wait a minute. I, I spent this morning telling you how Jesus was, everybody loved him. He loved everybody. He called his disciples to him. They all loved him. He went to the wedding. They, 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 uh, he made the wine. The whole town was, was, was celebrating, right? And Jesus showed who he was by that first miracle. And I told you, he's, that's how Jesus was. He, everybody loved him. He loved everybody. He would, he would heal the sick. He would, he would heal the blind. And he would uh, uh, heal the deaf. He, he would uh, uh, take the, the ones who couldn't walk and, and, and make them walk. He would even be, call people back from the dead. That's how much he loved people. But here we see, so you've got to understand that he is the Son of God. There's two sides to God. There's that God that's a God they love. And he loves us. He cares about us. He wants us, he, he, he wants us uh, to be blessed and to have blessed lives. You know, he really does. He wants us to have eternal fellowship with him. That's what it's all about. There's another side of him. It's fire. It's judgment. That he's the one that he's the one that uh, uh, that will one day judge the world. And when he goes into that temple, he does a little bit of judging, and he's very upset. He's very upset with what he sees, and he and and, and so he 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 what he what he this was his temple. Now think about it. This is his temple. This is, he goes and he tells him, this is my father's house. And it's supposed to be a house of prayer. And you have made it into a den of thieves. Oh, that's not going to work. And they immediately say, well, who does he think he is? You know, the, the, the high priest put this temple over here. You know, they're working for him, uh, for, for him, you know. He's working for high authorities. How can he be possible? How can he have the authority to, to kick these people out of the temple? To, to, to overturn the... Uh, the, the money changes uh, tables. Uh, why? What, what is he doing? So they're very upset with him, see? And, uh, and, 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 and it said unto them that sold, it sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house uh, a house of merchandise. You, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. And, and he, he disciples remembered that it was written, the seal of thine house hath eaten me up. So, in his zeal, the sin in the temple just tears Christ apart. Now think about it. He came into the world. He came off of his throne. He took on flesh for the love of us. And he comes into the world and he finds his temple filled with sin and being used with, by, by men to make money. It's not good money. It's dirty money. You know? It's being misused completely. And he's very upset that this could possibly happen. Now, he cleanses it. He's cleansing it. I want to ask you, what happened with you? When you came to Jesus Christ, did you think that you were approaching him? Or do you think that he was approaching you? What happened when you were this thing? Did, did, you, did, did you find him? Or did he find you? Now, I want you to see your... Your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Some well, people say, well, why should I give this up or give that up, you know, and, and things that are, that are harmful to my body. Well, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, why, should I, well, why should I keep myself uh, clean from sexual immorality, you know? 
Why should I do these? Why should I keep my, myself free from drugs and, and, and things that, that, that harm and, and, uh, and harm others and people around me? Why? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, there came a time when Christ approached you and you became a new person. You were cleansed. Right? Now, this is kind of significant that Jesus Christ, at the beginning of his ministry, came into the temple. And he cleansed the temple. All right? Kicked all that out. Three years later, he comes back, and what does he find in the temple? The same thing. He does the same thing. He cleanses the temple. Now what about us? What about us? What I'm saying is, we are born again. That's what happened to us. When Jesus Christ came into our heart, he found rotten filth in our hearts. He found sin. He, he, he found things. No, don't say it's not true because it's true. You know, it's true. He found sin right in my heart. That's what he found in my heart. He found, he found wrong thoughts, wrong intentions. My life was going in the wrong direction. It wasn't pleasing to God. My life was not pleasing God. Okay? Neither was yours. Now, now we, have, we have a man in chapter 3 named Nicodemus. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, he's one of the ruling seven. One of the ruling Sanhedrin of the Jewish people. You might say he was a senator. You know what I mean? But he was also had religious. It also says later on that he was a master of the Jews. That means that he was, in one area, he was the top dog in the whole country. He was a very rich man. He was a master teacher, and maybe he was the number one teacher in Israel. Okay? In some way, to be a master, a master in Israel had to be the top guy. Uh, the, the people saw him in that way. Either the authorities or the, the people or both saw him as a top dog. And he was a religionist. He taught how to be a good, do everything right in religion, right? And he comes, some of the religionists are having some problems. Some of the people, the, the high people in Israel, remember they'd gone to John the Baptist and asked to be baptized <laughs> to every repentance. And John told them, no, I won't baptize you because that's not right. So now he points, John the Baptist points to Jesus. He says, he's the Messiah. Now. Who arrives at the door at the door to, to Jesus and ask him, I, I came to find out who you are. You know? I came in, in behalf of the religionists. So he's 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 sent there by others. He's the top authority. And he says, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and the Nicodemus, Nicodemus means that he was a Bible believer. I mean uh, the Pharisee was a Bible believer, and he was also a head in, a, in the synagogue as well. He was a teacher. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So there's apparently he and others are saying, is he the Messiah? You know, the, the high priest is saying, he's not the Messiah, we've got to get rid of him. No, and, 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 they're, and they're worried about their positions. Well, Nicodemus is rich. He's very rich. He's one of the richest people in the Israel, probably. His family was known even later on. His family was a rich, that's a rich family in Israel. And so he, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't need any of that. He, he, he has a sincere heart. He wants to know who Jesus Christ is. And so he comes to Jesus Christ asking that very question. And Jesus Christ tells him, thou must be born again. Thou must be born again. Jesus just, just tells him. So, so now Jesus wants to cleanse his heart. <laughs> he sees this later. He just gets through cleansing the temple. Now Nicodemus should be all upset. He's a religionist and the temple was just over, you know, the, the tables and everything were overturned and the animals were kicked out. Nicodemus should be upset. Instead he comes and we know you're from God. Because everything you do is good. So he obviously thought that what Jesus Christ did in the temple was good. It was a good thing. You cleanse the temple. And Jesus says, yeah, but you know what? Unless your heart is cleansed, unless you're born from above, you cannot go to heaven. That's, that's what he tells the leader 
of the Jews, one of the, one of the ruling 70. Rabbi, we know that thou ought to teach it. And Jesus and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means, that means born from above. That means God has to reach down and he has to cleanse your soul. He has to rip all that sin right out. And you have to let him do it. Okay? You have to turn your heart over to him. He's taking Nicodemus and he's opening his heart. He's saying, Nicodemus, this is your chance. Instead of being mean to, to, to Nicodemus, Jesus Christ tells him the truth and sees something in Nicodemus that's redeemable, something that's right about Nicodemus. Nicodemus is seeking. He's seeking. He's seeking on behalf of others who are also seeking. I'm going to tell you something. But we, we're out of time. I'm going to tell you something. Nicodemus receives Christ as his Savior. When Jesus Christ goes to the cross, Nicodemus is one of those who takes his, claims his body. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, two powerful, rich men, come and get Jesus and put him into the into his in, in, into the uh, in, in, into his grave and and do all the, the the ritual things that need to be done, you know, and put him into the grave. Uh, in, in a place of, uh, uh, of showing his respect and his love for Jesus Christ. He, he got saved. He, he, so Jesus Christ tells Nicodemus, he says, he, he says uh, Nicodemus said that to him, how can a man be born uh, when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus, Jesus answered and said, really, really, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That means he has to be born once in the flesh, but then you have to be born once in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to overshadow you. <laughs> you know, just like you know, Jesus Christ was was made into a man and then they had a miraculous thing. So that's not going. You're not going to become like Jesus Christ, but you're going to become an absolutely new person, an absolutely an absolutely new beginning with a whole new mindset that you want now, not your will, but his will. You're going to, you want to change completely. This is your chance. Now, uh, Nicodemus did not understand that, but later on it, it, it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, in John 3, 16, saying that, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus did not want the people in the temple to get a bad taste in their mouth of what was going on in the temple and turn away from God. And Jesus, when, when, when Nicodemus, uh, the leader, one of the, run, the, one, the ones who ran the temple, came to him, Jesus reached out to him with the message that, he, not, that God doesn't only want to cleanse the temple, you know, in the city, but he wants to, to, to cleanse the temple of your heart. Nicodemus, there's hope. There's a chance for you. You must be born again. Not, not just of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. You must let God enter into your heart and cleanse you from top to bottom. And Nicodemus took advantage of that. Now how about you? The Bible says that thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Are you ready to turn away from this world? Now Nicodemus was rich. He's risking everything. He's risking everything. You know? His, his position, probably his wealth, would be everything. He could lose it all by following Jesus. But Nicodemus made a decision that he wanted to be a different person. He wanted to follow Jesus Christ as his Savior. They say it's easier for a child that hasn't been, I guess, deformed by sin. Uh, their hearts are not soured by sin. They say it's easier for a child to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, the older you get, the more we get entrenched in, in sin and, and mistakes in our lives. The harder it becomes to, to come to Jesus and be able to turn your life over to him and say, Lord, not your will, my own, but your will. Uh, it gets very hard. But my friends, there's just as many old people that are lost as there are young people right now, it seems like. We have a, we have a, a world that needs to be evangelized. 
young and old, we need to speak out and tell them you must be 